If you have your Bibles today and you'd be kind enough <clears throat> to join me in Luke, the second chapter, we're going to read this afternoon simply verses 8 through 11. Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 11. I want to talk to us this afternoon, my Christmas 2020 message on the topic, It Takes One to Know One. Amen. That doesn't sound much like a Christmas title, I know, but that's the title I have for you today. It Takes One to Know One. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And the King James text today reads, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord one more time this afternoon in prayer. Master, Savior, Redeemer, friend, we are so grateful for the Word of God. Lord, we understand that in fact you were not born Anywhere near the 25th of December, we know this, we understand this. But it has become the tradition of men that this date be the date when we contemplate, meditate upon the Incarnation, when we contemplate the day in which our God came to earth to do a work that no man could do that would affect every man and every woman, every boy and every girl. Master, in the name of Jesus, Lord, the message you've laid upon my heart for this moment, I believe, is a wonderful, inspiring, encouraging message. But without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I cannot possibly deliver it in a manner that will bring hope and healing, deliverance, salvation to the hearer. In order for the Word of God to go forth and accomplish that for which it is sent, the vessel, the messenger, must yield himself or herself to the Holy Ghost to be used of God. Help me, Lord, to speak every word that you would have me to speak. And help me, O oh God, to remain silent where it is needful and necessary and prudent that I remain silent. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house of God today. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord in the house of God today. Lord, let your presence be real for every individual that would hear this message. Those that are watching now live, those who will watch it later by reason of recording. Let the presence of God descend upon us. Master, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, bring life to the dead, restore the backslider, save the lost. For we ask it in none other this hour than Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Praise God and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, one day the Word of God promises that the veil will be lifted and we'll never again have 
to ask a question or make an inquiry of God, to attain an answer to some mystery, to some matter that we have never before understood. But instead, every answer to every question will be immediately made known to us after we have exchanged our human mortal temporal bodies for the glorified, hallelujah, changed and Christ-like body of the redeemed. Until that time, Tommy, I often have questions. I often have thoughts. Especially me. I'm, I'm a questioner, you know. You ever see those children who ask their mom or dad a question, you know, and mom or dad will answer it and they say, but why? So mom and dad go a little deeper with the answer and they, they answer a little bit more and they provide a little more enlightenment and then the kids say, yeah, but why? And so mom or dad goes further, you know, and, get, and the kids say, but how? And then they go a little bit further and then the child says, when? And it just seemed like the more the answer came, the more questions the kid had. Well, I'm here to tell you today, at 55 years old, I'm a kid at heart because, you know, I, I, I look at things sometimes and I start questioning and I'll ask the Lord, Lord, I don't quite understand this. I don't quite, why is this? And why is that? And boy, I mean, you know, my mind, and I think, oh, thank God the day is coming. Hallelujah. When we're not going to have to ask God why this, why that, but we, you know, we read something in the Word of God and we think, well, why in the world did God do things that way? We're not going to have to ask that. The day is coming. The Word of God says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. The day is coming when we're not going to have to ask questions. But in the meantime, I've got some questions. One question I've always had, and the Lord is using that question today, to inform my sermon, as it were, for this Christmas. I've often questioned, Lord, why in the world would you herald the coming of the Jewish Messiah, the Christ, the promised one? Why would you announce your arrival to a bunch of shepherds? I don't understand that. Wouldn't it make a lot more sense if God were to have notified kings and princes? Wouldn't it make more sense if the Lord had had an angel visit the king, or if the angel had visited Caesar, or the angel had visited a pharaoh? Do you hear what I'm telling you? Wouldn't that have made more sense? After all, wasn't he a king? Wasn't he born to be a king? Why then was his arrival not heralded in the hallways of some castle or some palace somewhere? I think, Lord, might it not have made just a little bit more sense to have announced the arrival of the Messiah to the High priest? Might it not have made more sense, Lord, to have announced the coming of the Christ in the temple? Wouldn't it have made more sense for the angel of God to appear? Oh my God. In the Holy of Holies. To declare to the religious leadership of Israel... Oh, the one you've been waiting for has finally arrived. Wouldn't that have made more sense, Lord? I don't understand why, of all the places in the world, you would choose a manger for the Lord Jesus Christ to be born in. I don't understand why you would choose shepherds who were tending their flock by night. I don't understand why you would choose in such grandiose 
and glorious of fashion. I, I don't understand why you would choose shepherds to reveal the coming of Messiah. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this week and he said some things that I'm going to share with you today. As usual, God was doing what he did for a purpose. I'm going to tell you something. Don't you ever think. There is not one word you read in the word of God. Not a single word you read in scripture. That is there by accident. There is not one thing that God has ever done. That he does not do by divine design. There is some divine purpose. I've, I've preached in previous messages. Uh, for the Christmas holidays, I've talked about the fact that uh, the Lord was brought to Bethlehem to be born in the city of David. Well, of course, we understand that prophecy concerning Messiah said he would be born in Bethlehem. He would be born of a virgin. Uh, so he needed to be in Bethlehem. And as is so often the case, God used circumstance to redirect Mary and Joseph so they'd be in Bethlehem when the time came for the Lord to be born. But not only did God use circumstance to direct them to Bethlehem, but he also used circumstance, the same circumstance, the, the census, the taxation, he also used that circumstance to make certain that all the guest houses were full. The Bible, the King James uses the term in. But in reality, uh, in biblical times, they didn't have Hilton's. They didn't have these great hotels and what have you. But as a rule, this simply often meant uh, individuals, as we would call it a bed and breakfast today, you know, people often would rent out rooms if they had rooms. And so there was nobody anywhere that had room uh, available for this mother-to-be and her espoused husband. So God used circumstance to guide the Lord's mother and Joseph to a manger. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this week and said, Where else, oh hallelujah, would a lamb be born? <laughs> Where else would a lamb be born but in a manger? Oh children, sheep aren't born in the house. <laughs> hallelujah. Sheep are not kept in the house. They're, they're not domesticated pets. But sheep are born in the barn. They're born out in the field. And the Lord said, no, where else would the Lamb of God be born? You see, Bethlehem, the word Bethlehem literally means the house of bread. Or we would call it today a bakery, a place where bread is made. Jesus said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. <laughs> Where else would bread be born but in Bethlehem, the house of bread, the bakery? Where else would a lamb be born but in a manger? Mm -hmm. God spoke to my spirit and said, I did not reveal myself. I did not manifest myself to humanity to be a king. My kingship has nothing to do with my purpose in coming there. I'm a king regardless. <laughs> I'm a king regardless of what I do. No, I left my sovereignty behind. That's why I didn't bother telling kings and princes and pharaohs and Caesars. I didn't come to straighten out the religious community either. That was not my purpose in coming. I manifested myself in the realms of humanity so that I could go to the cross, so that I could be a sacrifice, so that I could provide sufficiency in recompense for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, sin and offense toward God. Said, that's why I came. 
I came to be a lamb, not to be a king. I came to be a lamb, not to be a religious leader. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? I said, no, I was born in the manger because it was revealing my purpose in coming. I was born to die. I knew before I ever opened my eyes, having passed through Mary's birth canal, I knew before those baby eyes were ever open, and I first laid eyes on any person or anything, I knew what my purpose in coming was to be, and it was to die. I was born a lamb. Hallelujah. John the Baptist would later declare Jesus as he stood on the banks of the Jordan River, Behold the Lamb of God. Glory to God. That's why I came. So that explains why I was born in a manger. And by the way, Charles, for that question you have concerning the shepherds, that's also why I announced my arrival to shepherds. <laughs> when a newborn lamb is born, the shepherds need to find it as soon as they can. They need to inspect it and make sure it's okay. They need to take it in and protect it. Because the wolves and the foxes and the coyotes and the mountain lions are going to be looking for it. Oh, it wasn't too long before the wolf started snarling, was it? Wasn't too long before the leadership of Israel, appointed by the Roman Caesar, wasn't too long before he was having all the children killed and murdered, am I telling the truth? Why? Because that's what wolves do. That's what predators do. They go for the youngest because they're unable to protect themselves. They're unable to take care of themselves. And therefore it is imperative that the shepherd find the sheep as quickly as he can. When a shepherd knows that a sheep is pregnant, that one of his sheep is pregnant, he keeps an eye on her, doesn't he? You know, Tommy and I watched a video, and it's so funny because, honestly, I'm not kidding. This thought didn't even come to me until I'm standing here just this minute. He and I watched a video this week on YouTube of a man who apparently has some deer on his property that he's kind of domesticated. And one of the deer, they were pretty sure was pregnant, but deer, unlike a lot of animals, don't necessarily demonstrate uh, visually uh, that they're as pregnant as other species might. You know, when a cow's pregnant, you can kind of look at it and know. Uh, deer don't generally uh, manifest quite that same way. And he said, we were pretty sure she was pregnant. He said, but I'm not sure... He said, but I'm going out and I'm looking for her because I want to see if she's had any babies. I want to see if she's given birth to any little beautiful does. I need to see. And he went out and he's walking and he's got his phone camera going, you know. And he finally finds her and she's kind of tucked away in a little uh, area of brush and what have you, kind of conceal herself a little bit. And he's looking and by God, there's a baby. And there's another baby. And after a while, he realizes, oh my goodness, there's a third baby. She had had triplets, which is kind of unusual. And he said, you know, we're going to keep an eye on these. We're going to have to keep a real close eye on these because right now, predators are going to be at their peak. They're going to be looking and when they smell the blood and the placenta and they smell the afterbirth, you know, they're going to come. So now that we know she's given birth, we need to be there to protect these babies. The Lord said shepherds need to come to protect that lamb. They needed to come to bear witness 
Who would better know that a lamb was born than a shepherd? <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. I thought, Lord, what an incredible thought. What a wonderful thought. But then the Lord spoke to my spirit. He said, besides, it takes one to know one. I said, Lord, wait a minute. What are you talking about? The shepherds aren't sheep. They're shepherds. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart and said, yes, that's true. said, but as is so often the case, I am both the lion and the lamb. I am both God and man. I am both father and son. It's not necessary that I be too separate anything to be both of these things. I can be completely opposite things. I am the judge and I am the advocate. Oh my goodness. He's going to be our judge and at the same time he's going to be our attorney. Doesn't make God two different people. But he's able to be two things that are literally completely opposite one another, very different than one another. He's able to be two things at once. And the Lord said, yes, I came to be a lamb. I came to be the lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. He said, but at the same time, at the same exact moment, I was the great shepherd. Oh, hallelujah. Who better to bear witness to the birth of a lamb than a shepherd? Who better, ooh, glory, hallelujah. Who better to identify a shepherd <laughs> than a shepherd? <laughs> who would better recognize a shepherd than a shepherd themselves? It takes one to know one. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, I sold cars for a number of years. I like selling cars. I enjoy selling cars. Got news for you. You can sell cars and be a person of integrity and a person of decency. That isn't true of many car salesmen, if not most car salesmen. But boy, I'm going to tell you right now, having been a car salesman, I can tell a car salesman a million miles away. He don't even have to be trying to sell me a car. If I go somewhere because I've written that on Craigslist and I'm trying to buy something and the man starts talking to me, you know, and trying to sell me this thing, I can tell you in a minute flat, boy, I got a car salesman on my hands. Do you follow what I'm telling you? Why? Because it takes one to know one. Who better recognizes a car salesman than a car salesman? Let me talk with a man for a while, and all of a sudden I'll say, well, I got a preacher on my hands. Hello now. I remember years ago, even when I was backslid and out of church for a few years, if I went and visited a church, I, when I first came back to the Lord, because while I was out of church, I was out of church. I wasn't even trying to visit a church. But when the Lord was trying to bring me back in and, and uh, my ex and I started visiting churches, I wasn't in any hurry, any hurry. I had no desire in the universe to preach again. I had no intention of ever preaching again. Unfortunately, the Word of God said the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God never reverses. If He calls you, then that is your calling, period. End of the story. He never repents of His callings or His gifts. And I'd be talking to some preacher, you know, and that preacher, you're a preacher, aren't you? Uh, uh, and I really, honestly, I didn't even want to say yes because I, I was afraid where that was going to lead. And, but I couldn't dare say no because if I did, I'd be denying my calling. And, I, and that's something that I believe very strongly you don't do. And I say, well, yes, uh -huh. I've, I've not been preaching or anything, you know. But, 
Next thing you know, well, why don't you come preach for us? I want you to come preach. I just feel the Lord in you. I feel the Holy Ghost on you. I feel the anointing of God on you. I can feel your calling. I can tell God's called you. And I had this happen over and over and over again. Why? Because it takes one to know one. A God-called, God-anointed individual is able to pick up on another God-called, God-anointed individual. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been. doesn't matter how you've done things. Oh, I'm going to tell you, it takes one to know one. Do you follow what I'm telling you today? The shepherds came because the lamb had been born. But that lamb was more than just a lamb. That lamb was also a shepherd. In Psalm 23 and 1, the word of God said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The angels declared in Luke 2 and 10 and 11, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, not just the Jewish people, but to all people. For unto you, not unto God, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, listen, which is Christ the Lord. The Jehovah's will try to tell you that when men came to Jesus and said, Lord, that all they were saying was, Sir. Well, I got news for you. The angels didn't declare him to be Christ the Sir. See, the Old Testament prophecy made it abundantly clear that the same one who would be called Christ, the same one who would be called Messiah, was to be the Lord himself. And the angels declared to the uh, shepherds, Oh, there's a Savior born in the city of Bethlehem, which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> So although he is a lamb, he is also the shepherd. Am I telling the truth? Oh, who better to identify a shepherd than a shepherd? In Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 9 through 16, God speaks through the prophet Ezekiel. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep. Woo! Glory. Listen. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep <laughs> that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep. <laughs> he said, like a shepherd. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is among his flock. Oh, hallelujah. I wish somebody get Pentecostal and understand this for a minute. Woo! He said, I'm not going to be a shepherd sitting up in heaven looking for my lost sheep. He said, as a shepherd who is among his flock. Are you getting this? <laughs> Are you starting to understand this? As a shepherd who is among his flock. Hallelujah! His name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, my God. As a shepherd... Who is among his flock. Whew. I will seek out. <laughs> oh hallelujah. 
Listen. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Mm. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel, by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, I will feed them with judgment. Hallelujah. Oh, as the shepherd who is among his flock. He said he had come, Tommy, not just to be the lamb, but to be the shepherd. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 49 through 12, O Zion, that bringest good tidings. Oh my goodness, where have I heard those words before? O oh, Zion that bringeth good time, where have I heard those words before? Oh, could it be the angels? For I bring you what? Good tidings, hallelujah, of great joy. Oh my goodness. O oh, Zion that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O oh, Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Oh, Jesus read in the temple, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And then he said, this day has the scripture been fulfilled. He is the arm of the Lord. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance even, or excuse me, uh, he shall feed, excuse no, I've got to go back further. Verse 10, Isaiah 40. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, he shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Oh, what is the good tidings? The good tidings is that our God is coming. Our God is coming to shepherd. Our God is coming to find the lost. Our God is coming to restore. Honey, I got news for you today. When you were lost in sin, when you were hopelessly separated from God, 
God came to find you. Hallelujah. People often say, well, I found the Lord in such and such. Oh, no, you didn't, honey. God found you. Amen. We love him because he first loved us. It wasn't your first move by any means. It was his first move. He came to the manger to be a lamb, but he also came to be a shepherd. That was the promise in the Old Testament that our God would come to shepherd. Am I telling the truth? Oh, hallelujah. It takes one to know one. Nobody would recognize a shepherd in that manger faster than shepherds would. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Listen now. Isaiah. Isaiah 35 verses 3 through 6. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Again in Isaiah, God speaks prophetically and says that God is coming. And when he comes, the eyes of the blind will be open, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. All oh, those who are lame are going to walk. The lepers are going to be cleansed. The deaf are going to hear. The dead are going to be raised. Listen, in Luke chapter 7, verses 20 through 22, we talked about this last week. When the men were come unto him, that is, John the Baptist's disciples, they said to Jesus, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor, to the poor, the gospel is preached. You want John to know if I'm the right guy or not? Go tell him what you've seen and heard. Why? Because Isaiah said it. Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart. And the tongue... Tongue of the dumb sang. Oh, hallelujah. What was Jesus telling him? Your God has come. You go tell John what you've seen. And he, ooh, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost today. I love this time of year. said, you go tell John what you've seen and he'll know that your God has come with a vengeance. Hallelujah. Every sign that the Old Testament prophet said would be there when God showed up mm -hmm. was visible through Jesus. Every sign, every evidence of his divinity. Oh, glory to God. Psalm 80 and 1, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Oh, hallelujah. In Psalms, David says, 
that the shepherd of Israel is also the one who dwells between the cherubims. This refers to the Holy of Holies in the temple. This refers to the Ark of the Covenant and how the wings of the cherubims met at the center and they created the mercy seat. So what David was saying was that the shepherd was also God and God was also the shepherd. Am I telling the truth today? Oh, but listen now to the New Testament. In Matthew 25, verses 31 through 33. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him, not them, Him, shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus identifies himself as the shepherd. He identifies the sheep as being his own. He says, one day I'm going to sit in the throne of my glory, not God's glory, not somebody else's glory, of my glory. He said, then shall be brought before me, not us, me, all the nations of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Got news for you, honey. God is the lamb. God is the shepherd. Jesus is the lamb. Jesus is the shepherd. Two plus two equals four. Jesus is God. Oh, hallelujah to the lamb of glory. In 1 Peter 5, verses 1 through 4, the apostle Peter writes, The elders which are among you I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Now listen. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, <laughs> ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. He calls the Lord the chief shepherd. <laughs> oh, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And the shepherd is known of his sheep. Oh, my goodness. Of his sheep. Not somebody else's. I'm not watching these sheep for somebody else. These are my sheep. He said, I have... Other sheep that you know nothing about. Am I telling the truth? Isn't that what the Lord said? He told people, he said, I've got, I've got other sheep that you don't know anything about. You see, Israel thought that Jesus, that Messiah was to come for the benefit of Israel. Oh, but hallelujah. But the Lord said, no, I have other sheep you don't know anything about. Why? Because I bring you glad tidings, the angels declared, of great joy, which shall be unto who? To all people. Didn't say it was unto Israel. Didn't say it was unto the Jews. Said it shall be unto all people. Hallelujah. Oh, in the manger that morning, that early morning, late night hour, I don't know if it was still dark or if the sun had begun to rise above 
the horizon line. I don't know what the conditions were. I don't know whether it was hot or cold. I don't know, but this much I know. I know that a lamb was born. Hallelujah. I know that shepherds needed to come to take care of that lamb, to make certain that lamb was safe and all was well with that lamb. But I also know that the lamb was in reality the shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I know the lamb was the shepherd. And the shepherd is God. Yes. Oh, and I know that in that manger we saw the face of God. Like the song Mark Lowry wrote and sings. Mary, did you know that that baby boy. Hallelujah. Oh, children, I want you to understand today. Why did God herald the arrival of Messiah the Christ? Why did he herald the incarnation of himself to shepherds? Because that baby had two identities, both related to shepherding. He was the lamb that required shepherding. And he was the shepherd that shepherds the lamb. And it takes one to know one. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Amen. Somebody says, my goodness, Pastor, that's a short message. You don't normally do that. Well, it's the holiday season. Everybody's busy. We've got things going on. I didn't do it on purpose for that reason, because God comes first, amen. But it just happened to work out that way, amen. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we are so grateful today, God, for the revelation of Jesus Christ. We're so grateful today, Lord, for the arrival of Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. We're so grateful, God, today to understand that in the manger, a lamb was born. But in the manger, the chief shepherd was also revealed. He had come to save. He had come to heal. He had come to deliver. He had come to rescue that which was lost, to restore those who had been ostracized and alienated and separated from the flock of God. And Lord, this afternoon there are many, even today, in our community, God, who have been ostracized. There are many even today, God, who have been alienated. There are many today, God, who have been pushed away from the flock of God and sad to say, Lord, that many have experienced this at the hand of those who call themselves shepherds. But Lord, you didn't send anybody to find those that were lost. You didn't send anyone to find those who had been separated from the flock of God. You said your God will come with a vengeance. He will save you. Speak to the heart, God, right now of the backslider. Those who have walked away from their faith in a living God and in a risen Christ. Speak to their heart right now, O oh God, and remind them, I came for you. I revealed myself in that manger for you. I came as the Lamb of God so I could die for your sin, but I came as the chief shepherd so that I could search for you and find you. In your brokenness, in your pain, in your sorrow, in your confusion, I came to find you. I didn't send anyone. No, I went myself. I was the shepherd and I walked among my flock. 
and I searched out and I looked for that one. I today care for those who are weak. I care for those who are young. I care for those today who are wounded and hurt. There is not any lamb that is outside of my vision. Master, in the name of Jesus, help us, God, to carry this message with us as simple as it may have been. Help us to find inspiration and hope in it. Help us, Lord, to remember, O oh God, that you are both the Lamb and the Shepherd. O oh Lord, the lengths to which you have gone in order to save lost mankind. The lengths to which you have gone in order to restore the backslider, in order to save that one which is lost. The lengths to which you have gone in order to bring healing to the sick, to bring deliverance to those who are bound, Master, right now. Oh God, remind us, make this truth real. Send forth your word. You declare God not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Send forth thy spirit, O oh God, even right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, to every individual that's watching this message, and begin, even at this moment, to perform the work of salvation. Begin, God, even at this moment, to birth faith in hearts, to believe and confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, come to die, to be buried, to rise again for the sins of man. O oh, Master, today, by your Spirit, heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, breathe life right now, God, into that individual who's at death's door. Even those, God, who have already passed, you're able, God, once again to breathe life into that body. And we curse death in the name of Jesus. We claim victory and deliverance in the name of the Lord because our God has come. And he's come with a vengeance. And he said when he came that there would be resurrection. When he came there would be healing. When he came there would be deliverance and salvation. Oh Master we love you. Help us God to remember that at this season we remember the incarnation. We remember the moment when our God first touched earth as a man. Master, let it not be about gifts, let it not be about trees, let it not be about tinsel, but let it be all about you that during this season we might bring you glory and bring you honor. For we ask it all in none other than Jesus' precious, saving, sanctified name. Amen. Praise God and amen. Praise the Lord.